for this online lecture series. So it's again uh, international online lecture series. So before, uh, hello, yes, I'm audible. Yes, Dada, I can hear you. So good evening one and all uh, on behalf of the department of english midnapur college i welcome you all to this international online lecture series once again we are here with uh, an eminent speaker from bangladesh so before she begins uh, her lecture uh, it's a part of our lego regular exercise to introduce our resource person so today uh, amongst us we have professor ismat jain from bangladesh uh, she is an assistant professor at the Department of English, University of Asia Pacific, Dhaka, Dhaka, Bangladesh. She is a published researcher in the field of applied linguistics, social linguistic, and ELT in international journals. She is a recipient of the inspiring Green Educator Award 2018 at the Green School Conference Second Climate Week, NYC, United Nations General Assembly 2018. She is an editorial board member in a few international academic journals and research societies. Her areas of interest include linguistic and cultural diaspora, sociolinguistic, critical thinking, comparative phonological studies, psycholinguistic, uh, second language acquisition, teaching language through literature, T-E-S-O-L, T-E-F-L, and E-L-T. Apart from teaching, she is also actively involved with community organizations working for gender equality, skills development among youth and combating climate change. Writing short stories and articles uh, is a passion. So uh, ma'am, I welcome you uh, on behalf of the Department of English to this virtual platform. And again, I welcome all the participants who are listening to your uh, speech, to your talk uh, on the virtual platform today. So. Uh, Without uh, further ado, uh, I will request you to begin the session. So the floor is yours now. And this is the information that I like to share with my our uh, audience participants. If they have any questions or if they have any, any observation, so they can put them down. They can drop them down in the comment section of Facebook and YouTube. And at the end of the lecture, I will bring them to our resource persons and she will answer accordingly. So over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Tanmay Um uh, Welcome you, uh, I would welcome you all uh, in today's session. And um, so uh, before I begin, I would like to share my screen with you first. Um, I have uh, a presentation for you and of course we will discuss. Um, all right. All right, so I hope you can see my presentation. And yes. um, all right, wonderful. Okay. Um, so the topic for today is, um, of course, uh, EFL teaching online, activating critical thinking skills. And uh, this topic has been on vogue for quite a few years, but um, since uh, you know, we have had COVID-19, uh, I think the uh, topic is much more even relevant today and uh, it's it's much more interval right now so um the topic that i have is basically connected to critical thinking skills and of course teaching and when we talk about teaching of course my since my area is efl uh, teaching english as a foreign language so i will focus into that in today's lecture and uh, so before i begin the question that uh, i would like to talk about is um uh, you know COVID-19 on the scene. So uh, as Plato said, uh, innovation is obviously, uh, you know, it is something that comes out of necessity. So we had this necessity of innovating something new in the arena of EFL teaching when we faced COVID-19 
um, in the beginning of this year. And especially when, uh, you know, the whole world actually was um, going through such a trauma. Um, I mean, obviously, we couldn't uh, go out. We had to think of a new dynamism where we could actually have a new way of teaching. So um, the dynamic Dynamism that I'm talking about is obviously connected to is you know to our uh, mindset and uh, you know with the with COVID-19 on the scene since we couldn't go out and we couldn't um, you know socialize and we couldn't even go to the educational institutions and there were locked uh, there was lockdown everywhere we had to think of something uh, that we could actually invent and have uh, you know um, on the scene as a teaching approach. So uh, since we were, you know, adapting to the new normal, we were trying to actually not really adapting. We were trying to adapt to the new normal. We were searching for an alternative approach, which actually can uh, have a bigger impact in the in the, in the teaching online. So. Um, this is what I'm going to talk about today, like how we actually can focus on, um, you know, online teaching, and especially when we are considering EFL in the in the context, I mean, teaching English as a foreign language. Um, obviously, this uh, particular job in itself is a very, very challenging job. I mean, when we teach EFL uh, learners, it actually is nothing less than a challenge in itself, even when we take face-to-face -face classes. But, you know, with this situation right now, we are actually facing even harder time. I mean, not only me, but we all the teachers in each and every particular level of teaching uh, who are, I mean, teachers who are actually EFL teachers. We all are facing, um, you know, a new challenge, an added challenge to the whole um, particular teaching scenario. So the, the challenge in itself it is basically, of course, about teaching um, online. And it's, it's completely uh, a new approach for, uh, I think, a lot of teachers. Of course, online teaching has been there um, in, the, in, the teaching, uh, you know, in the teaching scene. But of course, the spread of it maybe was not that much of, uh, you know, um, extensive. So, so, um, so when I, uh, when I uh, myself, as, uh, you know, like any other teacher um, in the context, I was also facing the same situation. I was also searching from an alternate, for an alternative approach. And um, what I thought was like, of course, uh, like everyone, that we need to reflect more on the existing situation and maybe face the new situation and scenario and try to recollect uh, some new ideas and, uh, you know, uh, try to blend with the previous ones. And we need to assimilate our ideas into the new teaching scenario. So with that approach, I actually came up with, uh, you know, with, with experimenting a little bit and, of course, going into researches, reading a little bit from, uh, you know, different um, uh, research papers connected to ESL teaching and also a critical thinking approach uh, and, of course, uh, educational, uh, you know, edu pedagogical uh, perspectives and pedagogical realities, and like I was reading all those research papers and researches related to that, and maybe a few, uh, uh, you know, um, even um, I would say um, project uh, dynamisms. I was reading all those things, and then um, we, we uh, you know, since we when we read, we come up with new ideas. I try to reflect and I try to assimilate my ideas with my teaching, uh, since I'm also teaching in a university at the graduate level and also in the undergraduate level. And um, so I came up with a new approach, which I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to talk about that, how, how we actually can use it in our classes and how we can use it to improve our students and their mindset and all. So moving on, um, the first thing that I would like to discuss with you all today is the concept of critical thinking. Um, so critical thinking is uh, is uh, is something which is uh, nothing new, I would say, but we all know about this concept. But of course, we need to really, really activate this particular concept. So before I go into the discussion, I would like to uh, discuss with you what is critical thinking. 
So if we look into the definition given by Wang Wang uh, Wu and Ku in 2005, um, it has been mentioned that it's a process of reflecting. And uh, the reflection actually involves students who are encouraged to brainstorm and create their own work on the basis of their own prior knowledge and experiences and reflect thoughtfully to diverse perspectives uh, and you know um, foster cooperative peer relationships so um, here if you look into the code words or the keywords uh, you can see reflection the word is very very important here so we reflect when we critically think we reflect on our own experiences on our own understandings and our own um, uh, knowledge um, and when we really really are thoughtful when we are really really uh, responsive to our thoughts in a critical manner that is called critical thinking and there are obviously we all know that there are different perspectives diverse perspectives to any particular um, any particular um, uh, you know uh, topic or uh, you know base of knowledge so obviously when we actually can critically respond and thoughtfully respond to those diverse perspectives and we can actually um, consider our relationship to our peers that is called critical thinking if we look at a different definition, um, uh, you know, by Elder and Paul in 1994, we can see that he, I um, mean, both of them, Elder and Paul, both of them actually mentioned that uh, a critical thinking is the ability. It's an ability. Obviously, it's a skill. It's a, uh, you know, it's it's and it's a skill in, in itself. It's the ability of individuals to take charge. Um, so taking charge has been a very very poor concept in critical thinking. So you need to take charge of your own thinking. That is what has been mentioned by Elder and Paul. And they say that, you know, developing appropriate criteria and standards for analyzing your own thinking, that is called um, critical thinking. So you need to take charge of your own understanding. You need to take, take a charge of your own um, response uh, to any particular topic, any particular thing that you learn, any particular thing that we actually experience or that is that actually comes across uh you know uh, or comes uh, you know across of our mind and um we can develop this um you know appropriate criteria for analyzing of our uh, own thoughts so obviously this is connected to us uh, critical thinking is much more about your uh, self it's much more about one's own self it's much more about developing and taking control um, and being a leader of your own thoughts, uh, being a leader of your own um, criticality, your thoughts and your ideas. So you develop your originality. So that is what critical thinking is all about. Moving on, um, if I uh, go for some further clarifications on what critical thinking is all about, um, this is um, you know, um, an action. It's not something that is passive. So you must be doing something. That means you have to go into th uh, thinking. You must go through thoughts. So you must, uh, you know, think about uh, something that you are working on. So critical thinking is an action on self-regulation. So the concept that actually has been mentioned, mentioned by Shamut in 1999 that mentions self-regulation. Now, self-regulation, as you can see, self-regulation is something, um, you know, self-regulation. Now, that is something very, very important. Self-regulation means you regulate your own thoughts. You know how you think. Now, the question how is very, very important here. Um, so looking into some other definitions, you would see um, Scarmadilia and Rater in 1987 mentioned that it is about knowledge transformation. Now, transformation is something that is like, you know, you uh, just don't gather knowledge. Uh, critical thinking enables you to transform your knowledge from one particular um, state to another particular state where you elaborate on knowledge, where you add to a, a particular knowledge, uh, uh, whatever a topic that may be. Um, 
So looking into another definition, uh, which is cited in Paul uh, by Robert Ennis in Ennery 3, um, I saw this definition, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, interesting and much more expressive. It says that uh, critical thinking is about reasonable, reflective thinking that is concerned with what to do or believe. Now, you know what to believe or what to do. That means you have the control over your mind and there is no going back i um, mean you are involved in the reflective thinking process that means you reflect on your ideas and knowledge and thoughts and also experiences um the last definition that i would like to talk about uh, today is uh, by smith and he says that critical thinking encompasses metacognitive processes now metacognitive process is something which is a broader term and uh, metacognitive processes actually is connected to our cognitive um, ability, um, the cognitive ability or the process of thoughts of, uh, you know, the way we think. Um, so metacognitive processes are connected to the ability to analyze, um, you know, examine and of course reflect and also um, connect and of course, um, uh, you know, uh, elaborate and then finally uh, critically think uh, or deep thinking so uh, in short i would say that critical thinking is much more about um uh, you know uh, in getting involved into your own um ideas getting into uh, getting involved with your own um uh, thought processes and it, it, this is much more about deep learn uh, deep uh, thinking and it's much more about um, reflection and uh, uh, connection with a particular source of knowledge and or maybe a source of experience so if we think of any knowledge and every knowledge I would say uh, we can think of any knowledge as an experience so if we think of any particular knowledge as an experience critical thinking means taking the charge of that experience critical thinking means taking the charge of that particular um, knowledge that you have experienced in your life. So um, as a practitioner of um, EFL, I thought I would connect this concept of critical thinking with EFL teaching and learning. And um, so if we look into the, the concept here, the developing uh, 21st century critical thinkers, um, uh, which actually is, is promoted by criticalthinking.org, um, uh, they actually have promoted a wonderful, wonderful scenario, which is much more connected to, I think, uh, pedagogy and pedagogical perspective. And we can really, really connect to this particular, uh, you know, uh, framework. So um, uh, this, this is what they call developing 21st century critical thinkers. So according to this organization, um, we can actually develop the minds, the young minds uh, studying um, or who are actually the students, um, we can uh, nurture them with having um, a such such a critical, um, you know, being into, uh, I mean, turning them into critical thinkers. Like, of course, as you can see, there are certain uh, terms mentioned here, like open-mindedness and engaging in problem solving, analyzing, reasoning and evaluating, reflection, reflection on learning, real world uh, applications for knowledge, um, think creatively and critically, and of course, engage in problem solving, communicate clearly, clearly and accurately, etc. So, um, and integrate critical thinking skills with, within and across all content areas. That is the idea that is promoted by uh, the critical thinking dot org. And, um, if, uh, and then and another skill that is mentioned by them is like establishing safe and intellectually risk-free learning environment. So, you know, we are to give you the students um, a safe and intellectually risk-free learning environment. Now, that is, of course, being, uh, I mean, helping you to become uh, individual and independent thinkers, you know, in an, in an environment where you can express yourselves. And another thing that, you know, comes to, uh, comes to our mind is, of course, here, is man which is mentioned is um, students, provide students with repeated opportunities 
to practice higher order thinking. Now, of course, uh, that means when uh, you know uh, when we teach, we have to give you the students um, repeated opportunities. Like you know, we need to give you that particular environment where you can practice your critical thinking strategies. Um, looking into another one is like you know, consistently cultivating higher order thinking skills. That means cultivating is of course interesting. Uh, like you know, you need to nurture it. You need to practice and cultivate it over a period of time and it, it should go on and on and it's a lifelong process of course um next one is um allow time to develop critical thinking skills so obviously we have to allow our students to um really uh be uh, you know cultivating uh you know allowing them uh, you know extra time or you know sufficient time to manage their skills and let them think so it's much more giving the students the charge giving the students the particular um, hold of their own uh, understanding and knowledge and last but not the least it mentions that you know we need to promote academic conversations or dialect that foster critical thinking so academic conversations is, is of course much more connected to um, the interaction between um, a facilitator and the learners and of course learner to learner and it has connection to the learning community so uh, looking at this free uh, framework um, Obviously, we can understand that critical thinking is vital in the, you know, pedagogy of, uh, you know, in the pedagogical perspectives. So, um, so uh, keeping all these things in mind, I uh, thought of developing a new framework, which I would like to share with you today, as I just mentioned in the beginning. And um, so, I developed a framework which I call the Five R framework. The Five R approach or the five war framework to teaching online for the ESL learners. So um, I would of course discuss what is five R, um, but before that I would like to talk about the rationale that I have uh, behind uh, this particular framework. So, um, so obviously the rationale that I had is obviously as I was just mentioning that it is a desirable skill in education. So we want our students to be critical thinkers, and it's a desirable um, skill in education, and it is a it is an inseparable part of education. So um, I mentioned by Maisie in two thousand three. So we can see that this is something you know are connected to our education and the achievements of students, which we want from our you know uh, educational um, perspectives. So. so um, Another rational, uh, uh, rational I would like to talk about is obviously uh, I, I read a lot, of course, but then again I uh, I liked Liebman's idea from uh, 2003's book written by Liebman, and it says that she in it he says that the task of the teacher is to help the language learner master his or her language skills obviously we um the teachers are obviously there to help the learner to master the skills but teachers are responsible also for promoting critical thinking in the learner so um uh, you know according to Lippmann, we are also responsible for promoting critical thinking and um but it is uh, it is mentioned that you know other than going helping them to go from one educational level to the next we need to make them individual thinkers where they are the critical thinkers that means critical thinking means being a leader of your own thinking and your own skill now obviously um you know uh, these ideas and much more actually gave me the rationale to, de to develop a new framework which i would uh, talk about of obviously and um, you know come up with a new uh, thought which would be a combination of all the other uh, you know all the, the previous um, frameworks that we actually uh, have in, in the you know in the pedagogical framework of efl uh, learning so um, while developing my, um, you know, uh, uh, framework, I was thinking of uh, all these approaches um, that are actually um, there, um, uh, you know, right now. Like, should I go for a blended approach? Should I go for a task-based approach or TBL? 
or should I go for a community-based approach, which is a new one, a uh, comparatively new one, or should I go for the learner-centered approach or not? And where should I should I go for active learning processes? And um, you know, uh, or you know, what should I go? Which one should be would be the perfect one? So I had all these questions in my mind um, before uh, you know thinking of my own framework and then again of course um, you know if when I thought of blended approach I understood that blended approach is not um, possible uh, as I you know I cannot meet uh, my students physically right now so blended approach is something that is not possible which means that uh, you know blended approach means like teaching online at the, at the same time using the online materials at the same time you know the face-to-face -face classes which I cannot have possibly right now and then um, so I thought like blended approach can be one of option but this is not the only option um, available so it cannot go with uh, my scenario right now um, task based approach of course task based approach is something that you know is connected to tasks uh, that uh, you know uh, that we want our students to finish um, in this approach but then again tasks um, that I thought um, traditionally of uh, all required face-to-face -face interaction but then again I came into the idea that task-based approach can be a good solution for my approach um, however tasks should be online and those cannot be possibly you know offline or face to face um, again the question of lockdown comes in and um, another uh, you know uh, approach that i was thinking about was the community based approach and then again community um, based approach uh, obviously requires the students to get involved into community and uh, into a, commu a particular community and uh, you know, gather information, mix with people, going to the community people and talk to them and share ideas and collect and gather uh, different kind of, uh, you know, ideas and knowledge. Um, so then again, the question with getting connected with people physically came in and then obviously this was not again um, possibly possible. All right, so um, community, uh, of course, we can involve community in our teaching, but then again, I thought that th that would be much better that if we think of online communities rather than thinking of, um, you know, physically going to the communities. So again, I thought I would include community-based approach in my framework. However, they can be uh, this this approach can be used as an online uh, community approach. And then the next approach that I wanted to uh, focus much more was the learner-centered approach. So a uh, learner-centered approach has been there for quite a few years now, and we actually use the learner-centered approach in our classroom as much as we can. Um, but I thought like if we are thinking of online teaching methodologies, um, the learner-centered approach would be the most important one that should be getting into this particular framework that I was uh, researching on. So um, learner-centered approach means obviously focusing on the learners much more, not on the teacher or not on the facilitator. So um, I came into the idea that since it's an online um, teaching uh, scenario and um, in most cases uh, learners are obviously remotely based from the teacher and there is uh, less uh, opportunity for uh, you know for the student teacher interaction physically uh, why not taking them I um, mean the learners as leaders for the um, learning um, approach so i thought of uh, this interesting idea where i thought that the learners will be the leaders of my uh, you know of my approach so learners are the most important part and the leaders mm -hmm. for this approach so taking all these together and um, including all these um, approaches into my teaching i came up with uh, this new framework that I'm going to talk about and um, which I uh, developed um, obviously adapting from other researchers and uh, of all these approaches all together which I would call um, you know a hybrid approach I would say um, possibly um, so um, before going into uh, my framework what I actually uh, 
you know, based on Pineda 2003, I adapted the sub skills of critical thinking. What should be the sub skills of critical thinking? And uh, these are the sub skills that came into a scenario um, of the sub skills of critical thinking. Um, the first one that comes to uh, comes in the scenario, uh, scenario is critical awareness, and uh, which will be followed by critical fluency. And the next one is critical flexibility. And after that, we have critical distinctiveness. So these are the sub skills which fo follow one after another into a student's um, or a learner's um, you know, ability to um, think critically. So these are the phases that I identified based on Pineda 2003. And um, so I adapted the whole um, you know, uh, discussion by Pineda into this particular approach. So uh, what are these sub skills? Um, I would I, I actually explained it into uh, my uh, framework. So so critical awareness is uh, before going into that framework, let me just explain a little bit about the sub skills. The first one is critical awareness. Now, critical awareness is when you are aware um, that you have to think critically when you actually are trying to get involved and when you are trying to um, have a, a deep, you know, have a deep thinking of your knowledge and when you are really uh, trying to be, uh, you know, involved into the activity or uh, knowledge when you are getting it. The next level is critical fluency. Now, Critical fluency, of course, uh, refers to the um, ability to get into connected. That means this is the next level. That means you know how you think, not what to think. Rather, you know how to think critically. You know that you're fluent into the activity. You are fluent into the process. That means you are um, aware and uh, you are now aware and you are now uh, in the next level and you're fluent in doing the activity so you're not a beginner and the next level is critical flexibility now flexibility is something connected to um the, uh, you know the acceptability or adaptability to uh the other critical thinkers thoughts or diverse perspectives so that is critical flexibility and um so obviously you know that for any particular um you know thought we have diverse perspectives coming from different people so when we are in a you know in a, in a, in a social scenario we have different or diverse perspectives coming in from different people and there are there is um you know um, there are people who will actually have um, different uh, perspectives to a particular thing. So critical flexibility means a critical thinker who knows how to handle and how to accept or adapt uh, his own thoughts with other people's perspectives. Um, next level is the last level. This is the critical distinctiveness. So the critical distinctiveness is about much more about being original or being a critical thinker with an a un, with an uniqueness in the thought that means you are uh, you know aware of your distinct skills you are aware of your critical processes of mind and you have your own unique idea um, and you have gathered this phase um, you know after you have surpassed the last three stages so these are the three sub skills of critical thinking which i took into consideration in my framework and um, the five r framework which i'm going to talk about um all right so i hope you can see this um framework here i have the first three stages um in the in this slide here and i have the next two stages in the next um Line. Um, so before I go into uh, this section, I I would really love to know if you have any particular questions or not. And um, of course, um, you can ask me questions. Mm, depending on your questions, of course, I will go even further. So, uh, any questions?
All right, so uh, let me go into the, um, I think uh, the questions will be asked later. So um, I would go for the model or the framework here. So the Fiverr framework uh, to activate critical thinking online that I'm just promoting here uh, is about five R's. Now look at these five R's. The five R's are reload, remind, reflect, and resolve, and reproduce. So these are the five stages of my framework for which I have named the framework 5R framework. So um, if I may repeat once more, reload, remind, reflect, and resolve, and reproduce. So going back, um, the first stage that I would like to talk about is reload. So in this stage, we work with the students in, I mean, obviously I was um, uh, working with the students in class. And, the, and of course, um, uh, my framework connected to, to the classes, in class activities, as well as uh, out of the class activities. So the first uh, stage was reloading. Now reload means when we actually um, give the stimulus to the students or give the knowledge for the students. I mean, we present knowledge in front of the students and they are, they actually reload their minds with the information or knowledge. And uh, so uh, for, for this particular, um, you know, stage, we can take any material um, depending on the topic that we are working on and uh, we can give the students the you know uh, maybe the reading piece to read any about any particular issue for example um, suppose you take uh, one particular um, topic like for example the social scenario during the COVID-19 so suppose that can be your reading um, topic maybe so you can take that topic and then again um, you can help the students to be critically aware so how do you do that like when you are taking an online class the most important thing is that if you if you really have breakout rooms now breakout rooms obviously enable the students to uh, go into groups and you can give the students uh, learners i mean reading uh, materials in groups so that they can read and in that particular activity they will be obviously in groups and you will be initiating the critical thinking process into them so you will not say what to do to the students rather you will say how to do something um uh, you know how to think and how to work on that particular um topic or on that particular um information so uh, i mean or on that but on that particular material that you are giving them to read for example so if they're in a breakout room the students are can be divided into separate groups of like you know suppose you have if you have a bigger group you can have a students um, like a group of five or maybe ten um, and then they are in, uh, in groups and ask them not to you know don't ask them to do something rather ask them you know how to do it so you as a you know as a facilitator can tell your students how to be selective uh, when receiving a lot of data because in your reading topic maybe there would be a lot of data so ask i mean explain to them how to receive a lot of data and how to manage their time while having a rush task because obviously in class we do have you know um a particular set time for any particular task so for this particular rush task prepare their mind and prepare them with such a mind where they are they don't feel the rush rather they they really really feel active they feel that they have to work on it and how they can handle the situation and ask them to be selective ask them to be um how to be selective not to be selective but rather explain how to be selective and depending on obviously the 
type of activity that you're working on. And um, obviously, you can actually ask them to select their appropriate uh, resources. They can actually have their um, have more resources from online. Since you are teaching online, they can take different uh, resources on the same topic that you are teaching. Uh, they can collect uh, different resources. They can even read those in, in groups. So give them that particular uh, set time. And within that framework, they have to manage. So ask them to be critical when they are working on that activity. Um, so this is the first stage. And the second stage, of course, uh, is uh, stage two, which is uh, remind. So remind is another um, stage where they will move into after they have done the first activity. And in this stage as well, we are focusing on, again, the critical awareness. So in this particular stage, you can think of the visual intelligence of the learner. So you can depend on the visual intelligence. So since you are taking the online classes, um, so since obviously when you are, uh, when we are taking online classes, we can obviously think of the visual intelligence of the learners because uh, when you are online, there are a lot of visual, um, uh, you know, um, activities uh, i mean visual activities like like you can play the different uh, types of videos or video diaries or uh, video activities connected to your topic so you can play those videos for your students you can share uh, different uh, from different um, sites you can go to different like you know for example you can go to youtube you can go to different teaching um, uh, you know uh, sites and collect materials and like videos and you can or maybe you can make your own video i mean as a facilitator and you can show the students the video connected to your uh, topic that you are teaching um, right now and then again obviously in this process i mean obviously since they are in the breakout rooms they are in a group they will learn uh, how to collaborate now that is very very important they will learn collaboration collaboration is something that they will learn so this is again um, a part of which will help them to critically be aware uh, interaction and of course we will focus on the visual intelligence of the learners that means what they remember by watching something so what they think of, uh, of something when they watch how they actually think critically or examine something when they are watching something on video um, so this is the second uh, stage so we want uh, the learners to jump from stage one to jump uh, you know to stage two so the thing is that remember one very important thing is that this can take more than one sessions uh, in most cases because you know you can't expect the learners to have all the stages in one session this needs a lot of time and this actually uh, depends on your how you handle uh, the whole process so the first stage as i was saying is reloading where you have made critically, uh, you know, you have tried to make your learners critically aware. Second uh, stage also, you focused on the second stage, you also focused on critical awareness. And then when the students are done with these two um, processes or the stages, you want them to reflect. That means you want them to move into stage three, which is reflection or to reflect. Now, reflection is something that is based on the first two stages. Um, uh, these are based on reload and remind. So obviously the students um, obviously will reflect on what they have experienced because we are considering here knowledge as experiences. So you have presented two sources. One is which will be based on um, you know, visual intelligence. Another one was based on obviously reading. Um, and obviously you focused on collaboration among the students. And then uh, when we go for the reflection, we want the students to attain critical fluency. The attainment of critical fluency means we want the students to really, really know what they are doing. So now they are prepared to um, think critically finally because they are here to collaborate, analyze, do reasoning, and ask some smart questions. Now obviously I will explain what smart questions are a, a few minutes later. I mean, um, I think 
a minute later. Um, but in this stage, what we want, we make the students do is to, you know, obviously they are in a group, so we want them to have a group chat. We want also the students to moderate themselves. So you are not the moderator for the students here. You want the students themselves to moderate themselves and you choose, uh, you ask them to pick their own leaders. So they will be the leaders of each group and they will moderate their own discussion. So there will be moderators to this, uh, you know, uh, work on their group discussions and come into um, a particular conclusion. So they will think as um, group, um, you know, the leader of the group uh, moderates them. And of course, they will be directed by themselves. So there will be self-direction. And also, they will share the learning. That means, for example, if you have shown a video uh, and, um, you know, a video based on the problems that we are facing um, due to um, climate change, um, and of course, maybe you have given them, uh, the students, a topic, uh, you know, uh, an article based on um, climate change, then they, in this stage, will do a group chatting and they will have a moderator for each group. You will have a moderator, they will sit their moderator and among themselves and be directed by you will not interface, you obviously have moderators. when they are moderating and they are in a group. And number four, in this process, when uh, you will give them problems and arguments to identify and uh, you know analyze certain scenario from the text, so um, they will they, and ask them how to identify and how to analyze arguments. So give them the uh, you know give them the uh, keywords or give them the particular basic ideas how they can do it. Maybe you can do one or two um, on your own for their help as samples. So um, this is. Uh, connected to critical fluency, so they will have critical fluency. They will uh, learn. They will actually attain the ability to collaborate, analyze, and reason, and also guide them through smart questions. Now, smart questions are very easy questions, if I would say, if I may say, um, smart questions are easy questions in the way because um, you know smart questions are basically questions um, which are easy questions and not what questions rather how questions on any particular topic where you ask um, you know questions based on someone's personal experience with a particular knowledge topic so the questions that you ask uh, and the students, I mean, ask the students to ask themselves would be smart questions, the very, very easy questions like, you know, what have they experienced and how have they experienced, what were the tools and what did they, um, you know, like and what did they, what they didn't like, etc. So smart questions is a very good idea if you can uh, really introduce it in your class so that you know, the students will have the critical fluency and ask the students to formulate their own smart questions. It's not that you formulate the smart questions for the students, rather the students will, for, will, will formulate the questions for themselves and they will ask those smart questions to their peers. So the moderator for each group, that means the leader for each group, will help the other learners to ask questions to each and other peers. So there is a question of peer learning involved um, much more. So getting back, the first stage was about being selective and managing time and um, selecting appropriate reliable resources. That means reloading. Um, and attaining critical awareness. 
The second stage was reminding, again, about critical awareness raising and uh, focused on visual intelligence, interaction, and collaboration, and obviously focusing on a group and collective activity. And the third stage, of course, as I was mentioning, is about reflection or reflecting on what you have seen or learned or experienced. And it actually helps you to critically be fluent, finally, and obviously this needs the skills, I um, mean, the sub skills like collaborating, analyzing, reasoning, and asking smart questions. And um, moving on. The stage four is about resolving the problems. So whatever you have given the learners to ask questions, they, uh, they are obviously going, working on in groups. So in this case, obviously, when the students will work on a particular topic, they will have their own uh, perspectives. And obviously, each and every learner might have um, different or diverse perspectives. So in this stage, the learners um, help, we, we, we as teachers help the students to resolve their questions because they have asked questions to their peers in the previous stage. So in this stage, we want the learners to resolve their problems and decide um, and synthesize on the different perspectives by other learners. So in this stage, since the students know of what other person in each group uh, and what, what other people in each group think about the particular topic that you are teaching, for example, as I was talking about a particular text on critical thinking, um, so um, it is about uh, you know, th there would be different people thinking differently, different people will come up with different ideas about climate change and uh, different solutions, suppose. And obviously, you will, you know, guide your students to resolve the problem, like how they can come up with a better synthesized idea or uh, evaluating other people's ideas on, suppose, climate change. And uh, they can come up with uh, their, you know, um, uh, their thoughts uh, about what other people think. So in this stage, we want our students to attain the critical flexibility. Now, flexibility means when the students can evaluate what other people think, they can evaluate um, and they can think again. Obviously, for that, they need to think critically because, you know, every person will have different uh, ideas and perspectives based on one particular thing. Um, suppose if I was talking about the solutions to climate change, um, if that is your topic, the students will obviously evalu uh, evaluate each and uh, you know, him, his or her own ideas along with you know, other people's ideas. And then again, when they actually evaluate, you as the guide can help them synthesize so guide them to synthesize not instruct them to synthesize so you can help the students to come up with their own um you know synthesis um, and finally come up into come into a particular own perspective where um you know you guide them towards the whole process so how do you guide them you might have this question when you guide the students you have to not directly show the student the path rather you can say how to go towards that path so you explain what to look into and how you a person can um you know finally come into a synthesis which one is the most important and which one is the least important point you don't say that rather you say why one point is important and another is not that much important or why one particular text is perfect and another particular text is not perfect and how. So rather than saying what, we can say why and how. And uh, so critical flexibility means when we actually attain uh, the ability to be flexible with other people's ideas and um, positively uh, reflect on other people's um, ideas and perspectives. So this 
a particular um, ability requires three skills. Um, uh, I would say three, um, not four. Uh, so this means problem solving. It requires problem solving skill. So the learner knows how to solve a particular problem. And skill of argumenting. So when a person uh, tries to synthesize and evaluate other person's um, perspective obviously the person has to argue and the argument obviously has to be very very constructive in you know in your class so uh, motivate your learners to be constructive to be positive about other people's thoughts and ideas and um, you know um, uh, trying to adapt and try try to ask them to try to be adaptive and assimilative as much as they can and try to be uh, try to analyze and share as much as they can so the skill that is important here is analyzing and um sharing so sharing is a very very important so when the students share their own ideas obviously the other person in the group analyze their ideas and uh, in this way those learners actually achieve the critical flexibility um, so this was the stage four resolving and if we move into stage five that is reproduction or reproducing now this is the last stage of my fiver framework and it means attaining or gaining the ability to critically being distinctive or critical distinctiveness. So critical distinctiveness means the final stage of your development as a critical thinker. And it means that you develop how to be original in your thoughts. So that means you have passed the first four stages. Now you can finally think about your own idea and knowledge and you know your own original concept so you develop your own critical um, distinctiveness or you know your originality and you become finally an independent thinker so in this stage we can finally ask the learners to be elaborating on what they have learned and elaborating the knowledge that have, they have gained based on their experiences, based on their knowledge, and rather in you know, gathering much more information from the online um, resources maybe. And then obviously we want the students here to be decisive of what they think and what their own idea is. So finally, the decision point is here. So that students take decisions, take charge of their own thoughts. They become the leaders. They become decisive um, thinkers. That means they have attained the last stage. That means production, reprodu reproducing the knowledge. So in that case, um, the we want the students to present finally and when they present they present their original ideas we want them we encourage them to present their original ideas so suppose a person i mean a student or a learner was reading about or um, watching a video about um you know climate change we want the person to i mean the learner to come up with his or her own a unique idea of um, combating climate change and you want the student to finally present and take charge of his or her own learning now in this particular process i mean obviously the learner becomes a leader of his or her own learning the learner takes charge that is very very important and when the learner takes charge that means the learner has become an independent thinker and the learner is finally able to become an autonomous learner the person has i mean the students have become autonomous learners they can learn on their own they can take charge on their own in the whole process obviously you know that the whole uh, you know, framework, as I was just mentioning, starting from stage one till stage five, the students actually are, you know, being guided by you as a 
facilitator, but they won't be able to understand that you are guiding them. You guide them in such a way that they feel that they have taken charge. They have become leaders and they are independent. So this will help them gain the critical ability, critical thinking ability and become independent, original and unique thinkers. Um, so you might question, if we are focusing on the critical thinking stages, how can the language learning skills, I mean, uh, the EFL skills uh, be focused? So obviously the language skills, um, I mean, uh, the skills, uh, the receptive skills and the productive skills, how can these be, um, you know, um, uh, you know, um, these be into work? So obviously these are all into work because you are helping the students to get involved into all those activities that you are doing. So. Um, you have to guide the students into those activities. You have to involve the students in those activities. So for this framework, I have looked into a few sample activities, those which are going to be skill-based um, and focusing on all these stages of critical thinking skills when you activate them. Um, so the skill-based sample activities that you can see I have noted here are a little bit um, obviously uh, connected much more to critical thinking as well as focusing on the receptive skills as well as the productive skills of language. The first uh, thing that I would like to talk about is connective, uh, the receptive skills like this, listening and speaking. And uh, you can make the students uh, to, uh, you know, uh, listen to video diaries where you are sharing knowledge, as I was just mentioning in the stage two. And you can make the students listen to audio messages. So that is, again, a sharing knowledge, which, again, is in stage two. Um, the next one is multimodal presentations with interviews. Again, this involves much more um, listening. And of course, it involves, um, uh, you know, uh, knowledge sharing. Uh, so obviously, and presenting knowledge. So that is uh, stage um, two, again. Um, so if you are focusing on, um, you, you can actually make the students, uh, you know, also do video presentations using online software that is going to be stage five. And um, you can ask your students to make video story, like, you know, they would share their experiences um, of learning a particular thing or, you know, um, uh, gathering information on a particular thing. So you can make the students make video story. Again, this is stage five. You can also ask students to make a video summary of what they have learned from uh, the, their sessions. So that is, again, a presentation. So it requires a lot of speaking, as well as, obviously, um, it activates uh, the stage five. And uh, you can ask students to moderate student conferences. So you can arrange student conferences as uh, presentations from the students, where the students will be moderating each session um, based on their topics. So there will be original presentations by students, and there will be moderators themselves. The students will be moderators. So in this process, the students obviously will have stage five they will have to go for stage five um and obviously going going for originality and um obviously smart questioning as i mentioned in the in the process of course smart questioning is a part of stage three you can also obviously make them ask smart questions um so Project promotion can be another activity where where you ask the students to create projects and promote the projects through videos or maybe um, you know um, live presentations. So the students can work on these live presentations online and they can project um, you know they can formulate projects and they can promote their projects, which also again requires listening and speaking in part of the learners. And last but not the least, I have also mentioned drama skits. So you can ask students to, uh, you know, prepare 
one you know one act skit by one particular one character maybe or um, they can record the skits and they can present those skits uh, in the classroom which also obviously will have dialects you ask them to have dialects and obviously uh, present those in the class um, uh, you know uh, during the class and they can actually um, obviously in this process they uh, the listening and speaking both skills are interconnected so you can see um, not only uh, through these activities you can not only through this framework you are not only focusing on the critical thinking skills you're also focusing on the um, you know receptive skills and uh, productive skills uh, productive skills of speaking and uh, the receptive skill of listening Next one uh, uh, that I would like to talk about is writing. And um, writing, of course, uh, you know, writing, of course, is involving getting involved, obviously, into um, a, a you know, productive skill again. And then, um, you know, when the student, when the students are in the you know, fourth stage, after that, you ask them to, to design products and pro projects uh, collaboratively, obviously, and uh, you can use it um, uh, starting from, uh, uh, you know, stage one to five. And in the process, they when they write, they will obviously uh, do collaborative writing. And I mean, they will write in groups and they can divide their writing uh, uh, sections and you can guide them in the process. And then again, uh, they can, uh, you know, when finally they come into stage four, they can finally synthesize and come into conclusion which perspective is to accept. And finally, they can, you know, get into uh, their own, uh, you know, projects and which will require them to originally think, think uh, you know, have originality in their thinking. And uh, you can also write them, make them write project proposals. You can ask the students to write project proposals. So uh, again, you can start working from stage one till stage five. And the stage five will give you the critical thinkers finally because they are um, proposing projects. So for that, they had to work really, really hard and um, have to be, they did have to be aware and they had to be, you know, flexible critically. And then finally, they have have become uh, critical thinkers themselves. So um, in that process, you can also use collaborative writing activities where you ask the students to write one particular piece as a group activity, you know, because all the students will write one write up as a collaborative activity, and um, they can present their own writing to the class. And um, Another interesting activity that you can do in using this framework is writing own reference letter. So you can show the students different reference letters from different people, and uh, you can show, uh, you can ask them to read about what reference letter is, etc. And then you can make the students write their own reference letter. Um, yeah, so this is another activity. And one last activity that you can do is, again, in a group, is um, writing reference letter for peers. So this is another interesting activity when students have to think critically about their peers, to find out the mistakes and the positive sides and the good things about the peers. And then, obviously, the students go from stage one to five. Uh, I mean, if you make the activity like that, they will obviously become, um, you know, critical thinkers in, in, a, in, a, in a maybe, you know, uh, you know, small way. And um, the next thing that the next skill that is um, the, another uh, receptive skill is reading. So reading, of course, um, obviously needs a lot of motivation. So you need to motivate the students to um, become, you know, critical readers. Um, and then um, they can do these activities like, you know, you can help the students to um, you know, be uh, you know selective about what they're reading, so you can get this can go under close reading or navigating ideas, um, and then ask them to group their data when they are getting a lot of data from your reading, um, uh, you know, uh, the reading activity that you give them. So ask them to group data and how to group data. So give them criteria for grouping the data and information. And last but not the least, you can also go for interactive reading. Interactive reading is like, you know, obviously when the students um, can interact with the, um, you know, text so the reading um, can if it is online reading sometimes you have 
the you know the, the, the you know the computer or the software reads for you so that can be another way of reading like you listen but you are also reading at the same time uh, so um, that can be another activity that you can um, introduce in your class because you know uh, since you're taking classes online so um, these are the ideas that I wanted to share with you, share with you. And obviously it depends on you, how you use these ideas in your class. Since I was researching on this particular uh, framework, I found it really, really useful when I was teaching um, the EFL students um, in my classes. And obviously, um, it, Rem uh, just remember that this doesn't happen over, um, you know, over a night, uh, overnight, and it, it needs a lot of time. It needs a, um, a period of time to activate uh, the students' critical thinking um, when you are teaching them. So you have to go through the process, um, uh, you know, the process, and it, it, it'll take a chunk of time, and, and you have to repeat the whole process again and again. So this will um, make the students autonomous learners, and eventually they will take the charge of their own learning, and since it is online, um, you will you will find the students much more vibrant and active um, and they will be involved in your activities and um, in your sessions. So um, I think um, uh, these will um, help you all to understand how we can actually uh, activate the critical thinking skills among students when we are taking classes and um, become, um, a, I think, uh, let us make them leaders. Let us make them uh, make them um, take charge of their own learning. Um, and I think that's a, that should be an inspiring idea for them. So when you tell them that you are leaders of your own um learning you are the leaders of your own class you are the you are in charge of your uh, learning that will help them to get motivated they will be much more motivated than before um, so these are the references that I have used in my framework and in this lecture um, if you would like to look into it and these are the references um, from which I've read and I've used quite a few here. I think I've, I have read much more, but then again, I couldn't include um, everything here. I didn't, uh, I didn't actually. And so, yeah, these are the references that I used. And thanks for your attention. Thanks. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Now, if you have any questions, you can always ask me questions. Yes, thank you, ma'am, for this uh, brilliant talk on English as foreign language teaching online. So I think uh, those who have listened to your speech, your talk, might have been benefited a lot and we are living in such an age where uh, everything has to be done on or through online on virtual platform we have no option right, right. so yes uh, now uh, let me see uh, if there are any questions so i will ask our participants if they any, have any question they can drop them down uh, or any observation anything uh, related to today's Talk. They can put their questions here. They can drop their questions here. So it's time for question and answer. So I will request our participants. Or uh, in that case, if you are not able to have questions right now, or questions come to your mind later on, in that case also you can uh direct your question to me and i will convey them to our research person so again you will have your answer in that case so those who are watching or uh, listening to it on virtual platform right now is, as it is live i can see uh, there are many people who are
so uh, this is uh, such a time we are going through the, this new normal life again we are facing the technological glitches that we cannot try to yes we have the advantage right now as we are at our home we can attend we can do everything online and this is the effective platform right now that we are having we are also having uh, as uh, i don't find any questions yeah Uh, that means I will request our students. We will end the session here, and for that, I would request our students, Mohutisha, to deliver the vote of thanks. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Mohutisha? Yes. yes, sir. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, it's really a pleasure to hear such an interesting lecture, and it's an honor for me to convey the vote of thanks to you on behalf of the Department of English. Hence, I, Motrisha Dehuri, on behalf of our department, would like to convey my gratitude to respected professor. Ismat Zarin, Assistant Professor from University of Asia Pacific, Dhaka, Bangladesh, whose enlightened lecture on teaching English as a foreign language, activating critical thinking skills, has enkindled us to a great extent. I'd like to thank our Honorable Principal, Dr. Gopal Chandra Bera, whose copious permission has enabled us to fructify this session. I'd like to thank Professor Tanmay Kundu sir, whose heartfelt enthusiasm and effort has given this online lecture series a reality and us an opportunity to stay connected with the world outside in this afflicted era. And last but not the least, I'd like to thank all the participants here whose Vila's participation has enriched the whole program. Thank you once again. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, Mohrishi. Uh, thank you for the appreciation, and uh, thank you, Tanmay Kundada, uh, for arranging the session, and also the principal and, uh, of Nepal uh, College. Thanks to you also, that, thanks to you also that you accepted. Thanks to you also that you accepted our invitation. Oh, you are well, uh, you are most welcome. It was my pleasure, right? So uh, we will be in touch, uh, in the future Inshallah. also, and we will try to arrange uh, such an evening session if we get time. So uh, up to December, I think we are staying at our home and we are having our online classes. So there is no option. Right. <laughs> exactly right now. Yes. Okay. 